y'all this is tasha welcome back to my channel thank you so much for stopping in we are back with another week of married at first sight season 13 episode 6 y'all we are finally finally wrapping up the honeymoon this episode like <sighs> we this honeymoon could have been one episode if they would have just shown us the important pieces we could have got a smooth one episode out of these what three episodes that we got about the honeymoon because it wasn't a whole lot going on every show every episode that they watch but i mean every episode that they show but i digress here we are we are on day five of marriage when the episode opens up and it opens up with this sad somber music of zach out on the balcony with his mask on he says he isn't feeling well of course because he has covid but he's also missing his wife, Michaela. <laughs> okay, Zach, I'm missing y'all too because these other couples are quite boring. Yeah. <laughs> so we see Miller is complaining about Gil talking in his sleep from the previous night. Um, we have to see Gil bring back up the last name situation. If y'all remember from the reception, they talked about, you know, her changing her last name. He wants her to do it. She not so much because she wants to keep the last name of her dad since he's no longer here. He asked her about hyphenating the name and she's like, uh, not really feeling that either. Um, and I'm torn because I feel, you know, both sides of it, of her, you know, wanting to keep her last name because of her dad. But then also I'm like, but the last name would end with you when y'all have children they wouldn't have that last name so it's not like the last name is going to be carried on so i i don't get it but maybe it's not meant for me to get and i'm okay with that <laughs> so johnny and bow have breakfast and she once again has to talk about the snoring issue and i'm like girl y'all talked about this last night why we gotta bring it up again and start the day off talking about this again let's let it go like elsa said let it go bow just we already had this deep conversation. You cried. He said he was not going, you know, pick on you about it anymore. Let's just move on with life. Okay, let's just move on. But she's really dead serious in this conversation. Like, if you didn't know the context, you probably would have thought she was talking about life insurance or donating her organs or having children. When it's like, no, we're talking about snoring still. Okay. But anyway, Johnny says if they weren't married, he would probably be back on the dating app because he doesn't want to continue to live like this as far as kind of her making a big deal out of some very minor things. But he also says it's good. You know, they're married. Um, he can't kind of just run away. It's making him uncomfortable. Um, and the uncomfortableness is making him have to stick around and figure it out. So he says that's a good thing. Um, Bao says that she takes things slowly um, when it comes to the emotional side of things, but the physical side of things, she's like, we can jump right on in, even though her and Johnny haven't done anything yet. And I'm like, Bao, I wasn't expecting that out of you for you to be more physical than you are emotional. But I guess maybe it's, you know, how she grew up. I don't know. But he says that if she would have told him years ago that he that she liked him, he would have said that he liked her as well. Um, and they could have, you know, just gone from there. And I'm like, Johnny, you could have just told her as well. Like, come on. Next, we see Jose and Rachel who are still kissing and kissing and kissing. This, <laughs> I don't know why he is so annoying to me, y'all. I'm really trying to have an open mind and really pinpoint why he is so annoying to me but it's just he gets on my tv screen and i immediately start to roll my eyes and take deep breaths because he just annoys me i don't know what it is i don't know but he scheduled a surprise for them to go ride some bikes and she confesses that she can't really ride a bike and Jose used this opportunity to talk about himself. Like, you know, I tried rollerblading before and the first time I tried it, maybe like five, 10 minutes, you know, into it, I was pretty much a professional and I could be, you know, roller skating champ at that point. So I'm like, this situation wasn't about you. So what did this story really have to do with her riding a bike, Jose? I don't know. Then Rachel has some questions and ask what are some things he wants to do before they have kids. He says, pretty much says he wants to travel more domestically. 
she wants to travel internationally because he wants to save for the kids. He thinks it's smarter to, you know, not go on such expensive trips because, of course, they just cost so much. Um, and to just travel, you know, just within these here United States, I guess, so that they can, you know, continue to stack those coins. But newsflash, Jose, you will never save enough money for kids. Those suckers always need something. So just get over the fact that you you won't ever have enough money saved to have children. It's just. It ain't happening. <laughs> Brett and Ryan then eat breakfast in bed and they are going kayaking today. She's pretty much afraid of everything that's in the water. So it's a little bit nervous. And Ryan just continues with his dry, lackluster humor. Like he is just the fact that his facial expressions really never change bothers the hell out of me. He's like tells a joke and then his face still looks like this. And you're like, if. If that was supposed to be sarcastic or humorous or what can can your face, can you tell your face what we're supposed to be doing? Are we supposed to be laughing? Are we supposed to be crying? Are we supposed to be angry? I, I need to know what is going on because I, I just can't tell. But he does say if she gets too bothered about their kayak and adventure that he'll end it early, uh, which is really sweet because, you know, I was like, because we really don't see anything from him and I can't tell one way or another how he's feeling for him to say that was really sweet but even then he was just like you know if if you just get you know too crazy then we can just leave and you know go smell flowers and you know do stuff on land and that was his face and that was it and i was like okay then <laughs> Back to Johnny Bao, they're hanging out in a hammock and he tells her that, you know, earlier in the day when they were talking, he didn't tell her 100% how he was feeling in the moment. So he's using that opportunity now. So um, he says that he feels that when they are in the moment, she isn't 100% in the moment and she is thinking about something that either happened in the past or she is thinking about a detail in the future that has yet happened. And I agree 1000% with Johnny. It was like just even the conversation they had about her snoring it's like they had the really cute date he poured out his feelings they got back to the room and it was like they were such in that mood and she was already thinking about the whole snoring situation since the morning of johnny mentioning it she had been thinking about that in the back of her mind all day and then use now as the opera that time as the opportunity to actually say something about it and it was just like Bow, read the room, girl, read the room. <laughs> but he says he basically had a fight or flight moment. And this is the point where he really starts thinking like, I don't know if this is for me. So if he was on the app, this would be like the first date that he would not go on again. And he would just go right back on the app. Um, Bow does say that she saw it in his eyes and it, it was disappointing for her because she said it made her feel judged. Um, in this instance, I'm definitely, like I said, on Johnny's side because Bao does seem to be a overthinker and she just can't be present and in the moment with where they are. But he also adds while they're on their honeymoon this week, if they can just continue to focus on each other so that they can make the best possible start to the beginning of their marriage. So they agreed on that. So we'll see how it goes for the rest of the, the, the week for their honeymoon. So we see Rachel and Jose getting ready for their bike ride. She can ride a little bit. It's actually not as bad as I thought. I thought she was going to be all over the place. And I was just like, this would not be good because nobody wants to learn how to ride a bike on their honeymoon. You know, and it's just not jumping on and riding a bike if you don't know how to ride it. <laughs> but they sit and talk and she thanks him for being patient with her um, as they, you know, she was on the bike. And she loved the positive reinforcement because she really didn't have that in previous relationships. Um, and of course, Jose is being Jose. He's just, you know, kissing, holding her hand, rubbing her hand. And I'm just like, God, his love language has to be physical touch and or words of affirmation because, you know, the whole he wasn't sure if she's going to be physically attracted. He needed to hear it and all this stuff that that was something that he really needed from her. But man, the touching and maybe that's what it is that bothers me about him is I like physical touch as well, but. The touching is like almost nonstop with him. Like if she is in his presence, he has to be touching her, not just 
oh, our legs can touch or my hand can just rest on your thigh. It's like, no, my arm is around your neck. My hand is on your neck and we're kissing. I am stroking your hair. I am rubbing your hand. We are kissing. Like it is just, it, it's a bit much to me. It is a bit much. But they talk about finances again and about the whole joint bank account. And I'm like, do we have to go through this all over again? But I guess so because it's married at first sight. He has to let us know he has a perfect 850 credit score. And I'm like, of course it is perfect because Jose overcompensates in every other area of his life because he is not 100% confident in his looks and his height that he has to overcompensate in everything else to be perfect so that women will like him. My opinion. <laughs> So Brit and Ryan go kayaking and she's actually doing really good even though they encountered this big ass manatee and Ryan is just like, look at it, look at it, look at it. And she's like, no, no, I'm good. I can, you know, see it out of my peripheral. I, I am good. I don't need to look at it. He's like, look at it. Oh my God. Look. And I'm just like, leave her alone. Like she is already doing really well to be out here and not freaking out. And this manatee being, you know, under her little kayak and please God, don't flip it over. Like Ryan. She's doing a good job. Leave her alone. My God. <laughs> but they end up like racing each other for something. I don't know what it was. I stopped paying attention because, again, they're boring. Johnny and Val get ready to go parasailing. And this is right up my alley. I want to do parasailing so bad. So if I can get me, you know, a vacation, parasailing is going to be on the list. But it was just so nice to see Bao like fully present in the moment. They're just so sweet to each other. I feel like they have um, disagreements or kind of hard conversations, but they're always sweet and gentle with each other. And it's not um, where they're attacking or judging the other person for how they may feel. I just really like their interactions and I enjoy watching Johnny and Bao. So um, after they get done, Johnny starts to have a serious conversation um, with Bao. And once he finally spits it out, he talks about them living together when they get back. And he almost said it in such a way as if they were not going to be living together when they got back. Like I was a little bit confused as to what was going on, but I was like, maybe it's something culturally. I, I don't know. But if y'all have ever watched the show, y'all know y'all gonna live together after the honeymoon. That's just how it is. But they both agreed that it may be a little bit challenging living with each other because if y'all remember from the earlier matchmaking, Johnny is very particular about he li how he likes his stuff. So it may be a little bit getting used to for um, Bao to move in with him. Then we see all the couples meet up for drinks and dinner and Jose FaceTime Zach so that he can give him an update. He says that he's still feeling, you know, a bit bad, but he's getting better. And Mirla's in the background like, you ain't missing much. And I'm like, Mirla, this man is already down with the vid. And here you go talking about, well, you ain't missing. He would, I'm sure he would rather be doing whatever else y'all are doing than being held up in his room. Cut it out. So they sit down to eat and of course Gil has to get it popping with the group questions. So he asks about, you know, disagreements and things like that. So Johnny and Bao discuss how they did have the minor disagreement the night before, but they would they were able to have open discussion about it um, and really just, you know, figure out what needed to be said and just really move on. And Ryan really talks about, you know, how that was really helpful to kind of, you know, see them do that because they'll all kind of need those tools in their bag as they move forward. Um, they then move on to Brent um, and she says that she isn't good about asking questions. So basically her and Ryan haven't really talked about anything. She's like, no finances, no living arrangements, no um, last names. We haven't talked about any of that. The only thing obviously they've talked about is having kids where Ryan said that's a complete deal breaker. So I'm like, we need y'all to have some more conversations. Johnny then asked the group what the difference is that they, um, Johnny then asks, so what the difference is that they have? Like if y'all are on completely opposite ends of the spectrum, how are you gonna handle that? So Gil starts going in and he starts using the comparison of being Democrats and Republics, Republicans and child Mirla is ready to exit stage left because he really thinks that politics should not be an issue and it would not be a deal breaker for him. And Mirla's like, it would be for me. And I'm like, I don't agree much with you, girl, but I agree with you on that one. Like, um, no, we that's what we not going to do, Gil. OK. <laughs> 
But he said it doesn't matter um, how he it doesn't make a difference in how he feels about a person. And in my mind, I'm like, like, hell, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Depending on um, who it is, um, the climate that we are have just been in the flat past few years. Like, yeah, that makes a difference. And I do judge you for what side you were on during that time, because it was clear what side which side was right and which side was wrong but okay but once i saw kept hearing him talking i was like yeah gil is sounding like the black republican and ryan is just over there shaking his head so i'm like we see what both of y'all saying um brit does share that she and ryan have different political views um so i'm like at least y'all have discussed that and again, I'm like, did was this asked during, you know, application interview process? Did either one of y'all say that that was a deal breaker? Because as they go on, Brent seems to be pretty, you know, headstrong about it. So I'm like, I don't know. But um, Ryan thinks, again, that it shouldn't be causing an issue. And I'm just like, y'all are living in la la land like I get. I can understand having different religions because there's usually a common denominator of everybody believing in some sort of higher power, but politics. And again, especially the last few years. Yeah, no, we, we not, um, we not doing it. We not doing it. <laughs> but Mirla continues on and she's like, no, I've gotten rid of friends because of that. And I'm like, I am with you. And Gil is just like, that is being petty. And I'm like, Call me Petty LaBelle because, yeah, again, there are certain things that it's a clear side of right and wrong. And if you on the side of wrong, then we can't you can't be a part of my life. Point blank and the period. So Brent says that uh, if they were just dating, she found she found out about this topic as far as them having different political reviews that they can't agree on. She would just end it. And again, I'm like, was this a question? For y'all to answer and did y'all answer it correctly and then they still just pair y'all and i'm not putting that uh, against the experts because they are known for trying this whole opposites attract thing so they could have you know clearly saw it on there was like nah they'll work it out and i'm just like no don't do that but then they ask if um anyone has consummated the marriage i believe it was johnny maybe that asked I think so. I don't know. They start to all run together at some point and they all kind of look at Rachel and Jose because they're like, if I would have guessed anybody the way y'all be all up on each other, I would have guessed y'all. And they still in the moment still just kitchen and kissing and touching and doing everything. And I'm like, can we chill with the PDA? Like, you don't even know if this is maybe making one of the other couples uncomfortable and y'all just keep going. Like, just have a little bit of courtesy for everybody else around you who. A, may not be comfortable with all that PDA or B, may be feeling some kind of way because they aren't getting any love and affection, but y'all are. So just pump the brakes a little bit, at least when you're with the other couples, but gosh. But Gil said he doesn't believe that Rachel and Jose haven't had sex because they said that they haven't. Um, we have to hear that Marilla and Gil say, you know, they're taking things slow. We are happy where we are, blah, blah, blah. Brent and Ryan think they have a whole lot more to learn about each other. And I'm like, I don't think y'all really like each other, but OK, we're going to keep learning. And of course, Johnny and Bow say they're working more on the emotional aspect than the physical aspect of their relationship. And then they all kind of take a little poll to see who would be the first to have sex. And they all make their guesses. But we, the viewers, already know Mikhail and Zach have already won that bet. Um, and actually, Ryan does guess that he was like i would guess the guy that ain't here because he ain't been around his wife so when he gets around his wife i think it's gonna be on and i'm like ding 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 ryan you are correct um but even in this scene i'm almost happy that zach and michaela was not there because i feel like all the other couples made it seem like oh we have to have this deep connection we got to get to know each other it's just so much more important for us to talk instead of have sex and i'm just like if they were here and y'all didn't know they already had sex, y'all probably would have been making them feel some kind of way sitting here with the rest of y'all talking about it in, in this way. Like, cut it out. Because some of y'all know all it takes is one person to make the first move and you be down with the get down. Probably not Mirla, but maybe the rest of y'all. <laughs> 
So Gil, Gil and Mirla, they go lay out on the beach, have a little cabana. They brought out some ice cream. And the first thing she says, oh, it has to be melted by now. Is it vegan? Oh, my God, it's a little bit too chocolatey. And again, I'm like, Mirla, can we just enjoy the ice cream, sis? Oh, my gosh. And then she goes through all that. And then she's like, oh, yeah, I did ask for gelato yesterday. And I'm like, you can't even stop complain it for a minute to realize the man actually did something nice for you that you actually asked him for the previous day and he listened and did it close your mouth sometimes Mila. just close your mouth that that is it like oh my god <laughs> but they started talking about you know how they grew up and how poor they both were but she says she the earliest memory of her life she has is growing up with five other people and basically like a 300 square foot one bedroom home um, Gil basically also says he grew up poor also, but they both kind of agree that while we were poor, they never felt like they lacked for anything that they needed. Of course, they didn't get everything that they wanted. But as far as, you know, not having clothes, not being hungry, they seem to have all of that covered. But they then talk about kids and Gil says he was about seven or eight kids because he grew up like an only child, although he does have siblings. So I don't know if maybe his siblings were older than him younger than him or maybe just outside of the home and as soon as he says that Mirla is like uh no not happening no seven to eight kids coming out of this womb right here he says he's be oh, he's open to adopting a few and she's pretty much like mm, no if that if it's a last resort sure but I'm not really a fan of adopting and again I'm like we are we just matching we just playing this opposites of track game and we just keep doing that because, you know, you would think something as big as kids, the number of kids adoption and things would be something they would try to pair you with somebody that has, you know, the same goals and ideals around that that you do. But I don't know. But then she says that, you know, she wants to be able to afford all the things she didn't have when she was a child, which is, of course, why she does not want seven or eight kids, because, of course, that gets hella expensive with all those kids. Um, and then she looks at him and she's like, so were you some kind of, you know, trust fund baby, which she know clearly he ain't. But if y'all pay attention, production be so shady because as she says this, there's a song playing in the background that just keeps saying shots fire over and over again. <laughs> I had to rewind it a couple times because it about took me out. I was like, that was so petty. So all the couples meet up on the last day of the honeymoon for a little boat ride and they play Never Have I Ever. Gil says, Never Have I Ever Been Scuba Diving. Um, Jose says, Never Have I Ever Been Rock Climbing. And then Gil comes back and says, Never Have I Ever Been Streaking. And Ryan drinks to all of them. So he's just living a full life out here in these streets. <laughs> Britt says, Never Have I Ever Had a One Night Stand and Bow Drinks. And I'm like... Bow, 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 bow. All right, bow. I ain't mad at you. <laughs> and then um, Bow says, never have I ever cheated. And Mirla and Rachel both drink. And y'all know Jose is not feeling that. He started feeling real un uncomfortable, like, you know, loosening up his grip, sitting up straight a little bit from leaning on her. And I'm like, I'm sure that was probably a conversation later. Of, so what now? When was that? You need to give me some details because I am not down with the cheaterization that's going on. OK, <laughs> Ryan and Gil um, jump out and go paddleboarding. Johnny and Bao do the same since they say they've never done it, but they're going to do it together. Johnny ends up getting really, really far out from the rest of the crew. And of course, they play this dramatic music as if he's not going to be OK. But we come back. He sits in Indian style and he paddles himself right on back to the boat with no problem. The girls talk about the adjustment of, you know, having someone wanting to do things for them because they're also really independent. And of course, Mirla is like, no, I'm good. You can come do all the things for me. I'm here for it. And the guys are also talking, but we don't hear their conversation. Um, so then Johnny and Bao get back to their room and they talk about moving in together. And I'm like, did we not already have this conversation earlier in the episode? Like, why are we having to have the same conversations over and over and over again? I'm just I'm not understanding. Like, I, I don't know. Y'all have different routines. You'll have to get used to it. You've been living with roommates. You've been living by yourself. Like, y'all just gonna have to get used to it. But I'm sick of hearing about it already. But Bao then feels the need to share that he she has showered more on this trip than she usually does. 
And sometimes, girl, she just said, I'm so tired. Whatever I have on for the day, I might just jump in the bed and just go to sleep just like that. And Johnny is like, um, so you're going to be changing the sheets then every day or the next morning because I am not down for that. And I'm the same way. Do not put your outside clothes on on my bed. That, we not doing it. We not doing it. So Bowden asked, so, hey, so, so. What would happen if I was like sweaty from like a workout and I just didn't really feel like shower? Would it be okay if I just, you know, was on the couch? And again, Johnny's like, a, it, it t a shower take five minutes, Bow. You can't, five minutes, you can't jump in and rinse off sweat off your body to comfortably get in your bed? Bow, that's gross. That you, you too old for that to, to not be showering every day, especially after a workout, girl. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. So we then see Gil and Marilyn, and Jose and Rachel talk to Zach from the balcony. He's actually looking much better finally. So that makes me feel a lot better. Rachel and Jose have wine on the beach. Um, and I started wondering if y'all would be mad if I started skipping over them because uh, they just bore me and I just I'm, I'm over it. But I don't know. Whatever. We'll just. We'll just move on. But in their conversation, they do talk about sex and he's talking about all these boxes that need to be checked. And then I'm like, OK, whatever, Jose. Johnny shares that um, he did talk to his dad and his dad. First question was asking if she was Asian. And he was like, yes, dad. And he was like, great. So he said after he told his dad a little bit more about Bao, then his dad said that he is happy for him. So that made Johnny really happy. So I was happy to see that they made so much progress in such a short amount of time with his dad coming around. Um, we see Mila finally does something nice for Gil without complaining. Um, it only took us, you know, six episodes for her to do something. <laughs> but she gets him chocolate chip cookies, about 25 of them, because he mentioned before that he really likes chocolate chip cookies. And he's like, this is almost like, you know, foreplay. And I'm like, pump your brakes. You, you always got to go a little too far left. So Gil says he's um, finally happy that her actions are showing that she's listening. And in my head, I'm like, she only got you some cookies like this has been the one and only thing that she's done so she's made so much progress to get you cookies but we are talking about Mirla so I guess so that you know this is big <laughs> they talk about going back home and moving in and he is excited basically about how she would interact with his dog and Marilyn still ain't here for it like she is not ready to be fooling around with this dog she like I'm not walking the dog and I'm not taking the dog out I'm not playing with no dog I'm not feeding with no dog I'm not doing nothing for the dog and he says that he works two 24-hour shifts of course being a firefighter and he acts you know like usually in his apartment he would have a dog walker come and walk the dog twice a day um since he's not there and he's like that would be wasting money if you would be then at the apartment you could just you know take the dog on a walk and she's like no that would like that would be money well spent because the dog walker can still come and walk the dog and i'm like mirla is not here for this dog and at this point i just i need to see the application i need to see the applications i need to see the interviews because while I don't see it as a big deal because he's not really he's not asking you to sit here and play with the dog and and take the dog grooming and drop the dog off the dog at daycare like he's not asking you to do all this stuff but also on the other hand she doesn't have a pet and she doesn't have a pet for a reason because she does not want to take care of a pet so now she's feel like she's going to be forced to take care of a pet when that's not what she wanted because she does not have her own pet and I can't blame her because I have a pet and he is wanting right now for me to let him outside. So I get it, girl, how it, it's a big responsibility. And if you don't want it, you don't want it. But for now, to her to just kind of be, you know, step dog mama, she just got to jump in and, you know, <laughs> play the part, girl, play the part. Ryan and Brent, they're sharing their final dinner, dinner together. And I think we get the second smile out of Ryan that we've seen. Um, they revisit the conversation they had the night before the other couples regarding politics. She said that things got a little bit heated. So I'm wondering if they got even more heated than what we saw in the clips. But I would love to have uh, heard the whole conversation. But she seemed to be clearly worried about, you know, this whole political view because, you know, he wants to have kids like yesterday. And it's like, so what are we going to be teaching our kids? And again, he's acting like, it's not an issue. And I'm like, Ryan, 
You acting like you was at the Capitol back in January. You acting real capital like ish up in here. And Brent is acting real Black Lives Matter up in here. That's two completely fundamentally different things. And I don't know how you're supposed to come on to a common ground raising some kids on that. But we'll see how that plays out. Anyway, the first week of marriage is over. The couples are now headed home. We finally get to see um, Mirla outside of those flannel pajamas. Thank you, Jesus. Um, Rachel is asking for help once again because she's a bit of a hoarder. We know Jose is so organized. And I'm like, girl, Rachel, do you need help with your whole life? Like every time we turn around, you need help doing something. And it's just it's becoming exhausting. But then you want to be independent. Make it make sense for me. But anyway, that's how the episode ends. Next week, we see that Zach and Michaela are finally reunited. And I'm like, yay. And then we see the previews of it looks like they're getting into their first argument because Zach did not come home. Whew, so we'll see what happens next week, y'all. Let me know your thoughts on the episode down below. Do y'all think they just gaslighting us a little bit on what's going to happen on what um, Zach and Michaela next week. Oh, and I'm happy to see it looks like we get some experts coming in next week to have some conversations with them as well. So next week should get interesting. And this is usually when the show picks up once they get back home. So I'm excited to see what next week brings. Until then, let's chat it up in the comments below. I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.